Okay, so thanks for coming, and uh, you're, you're enough folks I can talk to, and that's great, because I really want to try to get some sense of how the Occupy movement fits into this work that I've been doing for the last uh, 40 years. I've been studying cultural evolution and how societies change, and the, the Occupy movement fits into that extraordinarily well. Like it's, it's a very uh, uh, obvious you know, thing that you'd expect. Like we had the, uh, the Soviet Union and South Africa as apartheid government, both very powerful entities, uh, very prepared to use their power to stay in power, and they seem to disappear in just a matter of a couple of months. And in fact, for decades before that, people thought something was wrong and they were talking about it. You know, something else would be better. If we were doing that, maybe we could do it like this. And the conversation would develop until the conventional wisdom understood that there was a better way of doing it. And it was clear to enough people that the power structures were just floated away. And the conflict that's happening in our situation today is that, you know, we have a horrendous problem happening with our planet is being abused. The rich poor divide, of course, is a major issue. Getting, those situations are getting worse, and the established order said, just says, earn and spend more money, everything will be fine. And it doesn't make sense. But basically, the game of monopoly is a mirror of the, of the, the way in which our economy works. And a lot of people haven't read the fine print of the rules. The game is not actually over. You know, we often you know, give up when we know who's got the advantage. It's pretty clear, right? But the game isn't actually over until everybody who acquired properties in the first stage of the game have mortgaged them and lost them to the winner. So on the global monopoly game, that's where austerity is drawing the, the resources out of the population, where privatization is mortgaging the properties we had and selling them to the winners. We know who the winners are. That's the 1%. We want to recognize them and congratulate them. Pass out some prizes. Pack up the game and play something else. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Back to the caterpillar is a great parallel to industrial society because it spends its entire life collecting natural resources and growing. And then the caterpillar comes to enough. And that's where we're a little confused as a society. But the caterpillar understands and it goes into its cocoon. And when it emerges, it's a very different creature. It lives very lightly on the earth. It sips the nectar of flowers. They're beautiful, which represents this incredible capacity that we have to gain satisfaction from living. And the butterfly's purpose is the well-being of the next generation. So when as a society we recognize that our purpose is to live lightly, to gain satisfaction from our lives, and to manage the material world in a rational way, then that's what people will be doing to belong, to be good citizens, to make our society strong. And if that's the modus operandi of the population in our millions and our billions, that can metamorphose the human project into something that's able to stay on this planet for the long-term future. So I've told that story many times, and I've had three occasions when there was microbiology students studying metamorphosis, and they gave me interesting additions to the story. And the first one said that the first cells of the caterpillar that become butterfly are actually attacked by the immune system of the caterpillar. The caterpillar is not feeling very good, something's happening, it's trying to maintain its integrity, it's a natural process. If you're trying to pioneer this new world that we're needing to become, and you're getting flack from family, friends, society at large, don't take it seriously. This is what society does. There's already lots of you know, reason to believe that society will try to keep itself the way it's going. But the second guy, it was about a year later, another guy came up and said, when a bunch of the caterpillar becomes butterfly, it band, bonds, bands together and it forms a core that's resistant to the effort of the caterpillar. And it provides the base around which the butterfly develops. And that's what the transition town movements, the eco-villages, the Occupy movement, I think, uh, is doing is, is enough people saying, oh, you get it? We can't grow forever on this finite planet. You get it? You get it? You get it? You get it? Hey, we're not crazy. We're on to something. We've got that mutual reinforcement of, of our gathering to continue to develop our understanding, to um, you know draw other people in, to start putting pieces in place that will be part of this butterfly that our society has to become. Now, it was about four years later. This is just last fall. Another fellow, studying the same thing, <coughs> said that once the form of the butterfly has been clarified, then all the rest of the protoplasm of the caterpillar turns fluid and flows into the form of the butterfly. And that's the point where we have clarified so clearly that it's possible to manage this world in a way that will serve the children and the grandchildren and generations to come. 
that the rest of society will say, yeah, we can't grow forever on this finite planet, and the wealth and the power and the knowledge will all start to flow in to that new form. And whether or not the Occupy movement is the one that will be the final trigger, it's got all the elements of what takes those things to happen. Uh, it's certainly pushing it very quickly in that direction, and every step that we take along the way will uh, you know, bring us closer there. It's neat, but this story is actually about Lillian, my granddaughter, when she's a grandmother telling stories to her grandchildren. And one of the stories she's going to tell is the story of the Great Transformation. It will have to have taken place by the time she's a grandmother. For the current system to be healthy, it needs to grow at about 3% a year. That's a doubling time of 24 years. So by the time Lillian might be a mum, human activity would have to double. By the time she's a grandmother, there would have to be four times as much human activity. The planet is reeling on this with the current level of our actions. It's not going to support four times as much. So we know that the change will have taken place. What we don't know about Lillian's story is will it be a story of denial and disaster or will it be a story of creativity and celebration? And the difference depends on how soon the human family realizes that we're grown up now, that we learn to live lightly, enjoy life and manage the material world as if we want to stay. And I think the Occupy movement is an enormous boost towards that shift in our, our uh, relationship to what means to be a good human being. So. You know, hooray for all the efforts that you're making here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.